This is the plaintiff, Shauna Baptiste. She says she used to rent a room from the defendant in her apartment, and the woman secretly installed a video camera to spy on her. Her rights have been violated. The woman saw her without her clothes on. She definitely deserves a rent rebate and is suing this louse for the $7,715 she's definitely owed. This is the defendant, Cassandra Cabrera. She says the plaintiff maliciously ripped the security camera she had in a common area of the apartment down and put it in a bucket of water. The woman's a menace. She certainly doesn't owe her any money because the cops told her to install the security camera. And if anyone's owed money today, it's not the plaintiff. That's for darn sure. She's accused of being nosy. The defendant has filed a counter suit for $4,825 for past due rent and property damage. All parties, please get ready. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, All right. So, Ms. Baptiste, you were renting a room from this defendant, correct? Yes. And how much were you paying? $700 a month. All right. You moved in when? July 8th of 2019. Okay, now at first things were going well, right? Yes. Um, you used to babysit her children. According to you, did you get paid for babysitting or? No, it was just like a few hours or an hour, 45 minutes, 20 minutes, she'll run out to the store okay. or whatever. All right, so but everybody was getting along. Yes. What went wrong? Basically, um, it was after probably the week before Thanksgiving or the week, let's say the week after, she was just coming in from work and I was sitting at the table eating my, my dinner. And um, she's like, oh yeah, Shauna, please clean up the drain when you're, when you're done. So I'm just like lost, like, what are you talking about? You know, she's like, clean up the drain when you're done. That's all. So I'm just like, okay. I was like, you have kids here too and they eat stuff, you know, and they put all types of stuff in there, you know? So I just stayed quiet. I went in my room because I felt embarrassed because she had her uh, babysitter there. That's it? That's what went wrong? Okay. So you, what ends up happening? Tell me your story. Um, Cause you're suing for pain and suffering. You're suing for every penny you ever paid in rent being to be returned to you. Why? After, after all of this had happened, I just stopped, you know, speaking to her. Then I get a call from the room agency stating that, oh, Cassandra doesn't need you in the room anymore. Okay, let's talk about that a second. Who is your contract with them or her? It's actually no contract. Basically, they are uh, legally a room agency. You go to them to find a room, and they find people who are renting rooms. Right. So you guys have just a month-to-month -month contract, or is there a lease? It's a month-to-month month. It's a month-to-month. Month. Okay. So she notifies them rather than talking to you and says, I don't want her here anymore. And then that happens when? That happens, like, the last week in November. Is that accurate, the timing? Yeah. Okay. And then what happens? Um, then I just stayed. And why, why didn't you just tell her it was just too strained? She wasn't speaking to me. Okay. At all. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean you're talking to her and she won't answer? Or what does it mean? She would just come in with her face and, you know, and very intimidated and go over in her room. So, you know, my mom came one day. I wasn't even caring about that. I was letting her rock, you know, like stay there. As long as you pay rent, it's cool. We don't have to be friends, you know? But my mom came over to watch the kids one morning and she was like, hi, Shauna. And Shauna just kept walking. So as my mom, she's like, you know, you can't live in a place where the person doesn't talk to you because you can't trust them and you have small children here. So she said, you should call the room agency so they can help you and tell them you don't need the room anymore so that she can move out, which was the original thing. You know, like if you need the person out, you will call the agency and they will take them out. So I did the procedure. So mm -hmm. then after that, let Shauna finish. Thing, things got hairy. You basically, you call the room agency after okay, the first 30 days. You can still days. talk to someone and say this isn't working out. But she feels like you're not talking to her, so she doesn't want to. So go ahead. What happens? Be basically, I didn't say anything to her for the simple fact that I felt that she owed me an apology and should have sat down and spoke to me when she made that comment when she came into the door from work. She didn't even say, hey, I know, Shana. I, I understand. Everybody okay. thinks they're right. Right, right, right. Right. And in life, because you're young, how right. old are you? I'm, I'm 39. How old are you? 32. Okay, listen to me, because I'm a little bit older. So I've lived longer. I don't like the way you people laughed, but <laughs> I've lived longer. And sometimes it is less important to be right than it is to be at peace. 
just remember that. It is less important to be right than it is to be at peace. This is your living situation. You've got kids there. You're living there. It's at some point, I may feel somebody owes me an apology, but if I don't make peace, I'm not happy. So I would rather that the thing that should be rolling off your tongue all the time is let's talk, let's talk, let's see if we can, that should be rolling off your tongue with your children, with your mate, with your roommates, with your mother, with whoever it is. It should not be a big deal. There should not be a silent freeze because people communicating understand each other. And then you would have said, listen, you kind of embarrassed me because you implied that I was a pig. Oh, I didn't mean to imply you were a pig. I was just annoyed because there was rice. Whatever it is. But when people don't communicate, this is what happens. And this got really, really bad because we're now gonna talk about thousands of dollars and an arrest. Okay, so now you talk to me. What ends up happening? Um, basically, when I was staying there, um, I was just, well, two, me two weeks or what have you, I wasn't speaking because I just- Did you pay rent in November? Yes, I did. Did November. you cancel the check? No, it wasn't a check. It was, I cash sent it to her through Zelle. Through Zelle? Zelle, yes. Zelle, mm -hmm. okay. Did you receive rent in November? She canceled both checks since the beginning of November. Are so you even saying, before, wait, wait, checks or Zelle? Oh, uh, Zelle, the so payment. So she can't, do you have evidence that she yeah, canceled I do. So even before, before the rent she paid before the argument, she canceled. So that's where we are with this lady. Okay, so hold on and show me. She's saying you canceled the Zelle payment. It went through, there's no way to cancel once it goes through, once you have sufficient yeah, funds in Zelle your account. Yeah, that Zelle was, well, did you have insufficient funds? I have sufficient funds right, in my that's, account. that's so weird. Show me your Zelle account. Was she paying the rent half and half, 350 every two weeks? Yes, yeah, she had asked me if she could pay it every two weeks, and I said, you know, okay, cool. I know everybody doesn't get paid every week. Now, you end up, let's get let's fast forward. According to her, you didn't you canceled November. According to you, you paid November. Yeah. And then what happens in December? Do you pay December? Um, no, because I knew she already wanted me out. On December 13th, after 1 a.m., her and her boyfriend came into the room when I was there, the door was closed, and she said, You stupid black. Why you call the management office on me? You watch and well, see. Yeah, so we're skipping all kinds of stuff. What happened on December 13th? No, actually, on December 13th, Shauna here, she called my landlord. I am a single mom with three small kids, okay? The reason why she's staying in my apartment is because I need to make rent to keep a roof over my kid's head, which I was struggling with. My attorney calls me that my management company's attorney told him that somebody called and said, I sublet my apartment to them. I, you Are sublet you allowed the apartment. to or not? No, I did not sublet my apartment. She oh, said I subletting. sublet my apartment to her. I didn't. I lived there well, with my children. Well, technically speaking, no, you're, actually, you're right. You are right legally. You can get a roommate. I can get a roommate. So stop a second. Now, here's my question to you. On December 31st, what occurs? Um, I had seen a camera. On her, dolls, on her daughter's dollhouse. Where is the dollhouse located? Okay, so the dollhouse is all the way at the end. Of what? In, in the hallway. Okay. Of the apartment. So I wait till everyone leave and I stay in my room because I don't want, you know, I already know it's a tension between me and her. So I stay in my room and I come out after they leave. So I see a camera there and I'm like, what in the world, you know, what is this? And it's plugged in and it's on. So I thought it was just there, just to be there. So I took the camera and I'm looking at it and I unplugged it and it was a mop bucket right next to the dollhouse in front of her room and I just dropped it in there. In the water? Yes. Okay. Just the reason on my defense is because she's taking me to the point where I didn't want to know you know, conflict, physical conflict, because- And I'm how being, did you think that taking her camera, ripping it off the dollhouse and sticking it in water no, was going to- I didn't it off of the dollhouse. Taking it off the dollhouse and putting it in a bucket of water was going to create because, peace. Because I was so frustrated, I already Yeah, was that just on, sounds like typical one-upmanship of anger. That doesn't sound like trying to keep peace. It sounds like I've you're tried, angry. I've tried now, to, according to your complaint, you were naked when that happened? Well, I walk around the house nude. Right? Why? When, when, nobody, when nobody's there. When nobody's there yeah, because- No one wants that. Whether no. there's a camera or not a camera, no one wants that no, because I, it's a little, un, I don't need to go into specifics, do I? I was walking around like from the bathroom to, the, to my room and sometimes I'll forget my towel in my bedroom so I'll go. But walking around the whole house, no. But it's times where I have- Okay, did you ever see her nude on any of that? 
one time when she had just moved in, you know, I, I, this is Oh, new. has that camera been there since she moved in? No, this, I did this after she called my landlord because I felt, you know, now she has malicious intent. Okay. Because if I get evicted, you know, what am I going to do with my three small I kids? got it. So you put the camera on. So I put on. the camera because I don't have locks on my doors. You can open it with a quarter. Okay. So my belongings are there and my children are Okay, sleeping. so you put the camera. I put the camera because I don't trust her. Right. So I put the camera. I was Did watching. you ever tell her, by the way, there's going to be a camera? No, you but the camera should've. was in plain sight. Yeah, I know. It wasn't but, hidden. I know, but you probably should have because she's home. renting the room, but she has access to the other places. And if you're going to have a camera there, you should probably say it. But go ahead. So what so happened? So the day that she did that, I told her, you know, when, she, she, did when, what? She, when she grabbed the camera, so she was you have her, Do you actually have the video of her grabbing the, the camera? The video got deleted, but Darn I, it. I All right, have go a on. picture. Hold on. So this is it. She's wearing her pajamas. She wasn't naked. Yep, she's got something on. This is the one, right? Yeah, so she grabs it, and that's when the picture goes blank. And then, of course, you know, I have to be careful because I have all my okay, personal things there. Why did you grab it and throw it in the water bucket? Because you didn't want to be taped? Yeah. Then why didn't you just put a tape on it, like a piece of masking tape? What? Or I didn't, I didn't know. You didn't know what? I didn't you know what you're doing when you throw it in water? If I, you had taken it apart and then just put it next to it, that'd be one thing. You maliciously put it in water. So what did you, by the way, did you ever see her naked on any of those tapes? No, no, I didn't. However, okay. I did walk into the apartment one day. Sometimes I stay at my mom's because she lives nearby. And if it's too late, I stay with the kids, you know? And I, I guess she hadn't heard us in the apartment. I walked in and she's like, oh, I'm naked. And I, I thought that was a little odd because not even I am naked in my own apartment. Okay, all right, enough but, naked you know, talk. So thing. now what happens is, you do you actually see that this happens when you decide, let me check up on my tape? Or no, how do you know? That, because the camera has a, a motion sensor, so it had sent me a text, you okay, know? Okay, so it sends you a text, and And, and, and then what I see her grab it, and it goes blank. So I send her a message, and I'm like, you know, there are more cameras, but there weren't any. I just wanted her to deter her from, from going into my personal okay. stuff. I have my social, so my passport. So you send her a message saying there are more cameras, and yeah, she says... Yeah, there are more cameras, and she tells me, oh, I'm not worried about you. Stop bothering me. I okay. have rights. So you called the police. So I... No, the next day when I came home, I walk in. It was 23 degrees outside. I have three kids. She left the door, the window open. This is the second time she leaves the window open in the room. How did you know? Because, because the, the door is open? The first time around, you could. the babysitter told me, you know, the apartment's very cold. She left the window open, but I don't know how to get in the room. That was before when I could change it with the coin. But she took it upon herself to change the lock without my permission. So I couldn't get in. When I came in the apartment and it was cold on the 31st, no, on the 1st, I called First NYPD. First of January. Uh -huh. I called NYPD. I didn't even call about the camera. They, they asked me about the camera. Um, and I told them, you know, I need to get in the room. It's not my property. I can't get in. But the window is open. And they were there. And they told me, open the door. She had forgot to lock the door, actually. So I opened the door. I went in. And they said, go ahead, close the window. They watched me do that because she claims that I did it, you know, without permission, whatever. When we came back out, I told them what's going on with this woman that she's, you know, she's basically terrorizing me in my own home with my kids. And I'm telling them, look, she got the camera. And the camera was still in the bucket. So he's like, oh, OK, where's the camera? I said, you know, she damages it in the bucket. So then that's when did the issue. Did have water? Yes, because okay. I was mopping before I left, yeah. you know, cleaning for New Year's. So um, I took it out, and then that's where they're like, oh, okay, now this is a misdemeanor, so we can arrest her on those grounds. So you what know? happens? Is she there at the time? No. She wasn't there. She didn't come back because this woman is a coward. She won't face me unless there's some... So how did they end up arresting her? They arrested her later that uh, day? There was a, a detective looking for her for like two weeks, and then like a week... Oh, on the 12th... What um, day does she get arrested? I believe she got arrested on the 13th. Okay, was she in your house between January 1st and the 13th? She wasn't, because she, she's a coward, like I said. Okay, so how did she get arrested on the 13th? Where? Um, the Where'd office, you get arrested? Um, it was the 14th, and I was at my doctor's appointment. How'd they find um, you? They called, my, they called my phone and left a message and said for me to please call the detective so he can speak to me. He didn't call you before the 1st? No. He, okay, so then uh, you speak to the detective, and they say what? We have a um, warrant for you, or they, come on in said, and talk they, to me? They said, come on in and talk so to us. So you come on in, and then they arrest you? Yes. All right, so this is the middle of January. So I speak to the detective, and I tell him what's going on. You know, this woman is suing me through small claims court. She's suing, she's suing. This is the second lawsuit I have from this lady. Okay, the first lawsuit was, was in because small... She, she wanted to reoccupy my apartment. Obviously, you can't reoccupy my apartment. You and I don't get along, and she wanted... Her lawsuit was for me to get evicted. I am the main leaseholder. Wait, wait, wait. She filed a... Another a... lawsuit, because she Tell said, me the two lawsuits she's filed. She's filed this one for me to pay her back the rent she lived. Okay, and... And then she filed another one, because she said, I illegally changed my locks, which I didn't. That was last week. It was settled. Then she also said, I, I prevent her from getting her belongings, which is a lie, because I have a text message from her asking me to give her more time to find a place to stay 
day to go pick up her stuff. I never told her she couldn't pick up her stuff. However- Tell me what happened in that case when you say that settled. How did it settle? The, the magistrate told her that she obviously needs to find a place to stay because she cannot live with me and my children okay. because we don't get along. What was that lawsuit that you filed? Oh, a legal lockout. Okay. Because when I went to the house, she told the babysitter in Spanish, el muchacha la lo e loca. She's saying to her in Spanish that I'm local. So she's, she's af afraid. Now the babysitter is afraid to even let me in. So she had to chain in a, on the door. So I had to call the cops to get in because I So you filed the for an illegal lockout. What was your objective? To be able to live there and get back in or to get your stuff? No, just to get my so stuff. So it gets settled for you to have a, a certain date and time to get your stuff. Has the That's stuff correct. been removed? Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, hallelujah. So I we're see. done, right? Thank God. We're done. So now the only question, let's talk about it. You have a lawsuit here for $3,500 because you want the $700 a month that you paid while you lived there paid back to you. Under what legal theory would that happen? You lived there. She broke the agreement that we had because By? I was, what, what I signed, what I filled out, I believe I filled out for a year for me to stay Give here. me the proof of that. I don't. I then don't you don't have it. a contract for a year because you can't prove it, right? Right. Right. So now... This is what you she also, said, my landlord. You also are suing for $2,215 in hotel bills. Okay. Why are you staying at a hotel? Because I couldn't bear to be there with all the stress that was going on. And again, I stated that I'm on medical leave. Why would, okay, now I understand that. I understand what you're saying. I'm trying to understand why you were saying that she has to pay that. She knew that I was on medical leave and I have diabetes since I was seven years old. So my sugars have to be a certain range before I get hernia surgery, which hasn't happened yet with me finding a place to stay that's peaceful. These are hotels ago. that you paid for while you were living there? No. Hotels that you paid for when? When she told me that I had to leave, she didn't want to speak to me. Okay. She didn't well, want me in the, the house. She no told more. you you had to leave, but you didn't leave. So the first time that you left was when the police arrested you, which wasn't until- She left mm -hmm. on January 1st. Uh, okay, so January show me your hotel bills. Show me your 31st. hotel bills you're talking about. Okay, okay this is in December. Why would she pay your hotel bill in December? Because you didn't feel like staying no, there because it was awkward? No. That doesn't mean that the, that the person has to pay your hotel bills. No, Your Honor. I was going through a lot with her before that. She was kept on talking to people about me and speaking loud okay. in the house. I, now I'm not asking no you, now I'm telling you. Okay. That does not rise to the leg, level of a legal obligation for her to, to eat rent, not get paid rent, and pay hotel bills, which is what you're asking for. That does not rise to that level. The fact that you guys are awkward with each other, you don't like each other, and each of you are you know, talking about people, whatever you're, you're saying to me, none of it rises to the level. Uh, if you feel like you need to stay in a hotel for your peace, good for you. But that is different from someone else having a legal obligation to pay for your hotel. And pain and suffering, um, why? Because you guys don't get along? You have a counterclaim against her. According to you, you are suing for the rent because according to you, you didn't pay it. We're gonna put a little pin in that because that's what we're gonna figure out through Zelle. I'm gonna need you to check your Chase account to yeah, see I'll if check. it went through. I, mean, I didn't even know she had canceled those checks until I got home. Oh, I was on my way home and I get a call from ACS that Shauna had called telling them that I was a negligent mother to my children. So this is where you this called gets ACS this after you got arrested. Stop, stop. You called the Child Protective Services for the state after you got arrested for destroying the camera? I told ACS that it was times when I would watch her children and it was a time where I visually seen her go into her room and lock the baby in her room with uh, a stroller. She'll put it over the door so the baby couldn't get out if she has a two-year-old. So I'm yes, like, you know, just sitting there just Minding my business, basically. This happened a few times from the time that I moved in. I noticed this happening around, let's say- What else did you say to them? So I also told them that she smokes and the house was smelling smokes like- Smokes what? So, smokes weed and hookah <laughs> because she had her boyfriend there and the whole house on two occasions okay. was smoking- So like, let me ask you, like weed. apparently that bothered you a lot and you were worried about the children, right? Yes. But you only called- No, I didn't. Child Protective no, I Service. I haven't said my I'm question sorry. yet. You only called them after you got arrested for criminal mischief. You never called in July, August, September, October, November, December, did you? No. So you did it in retaliation, didn't you? No, I didn't. No, because it kind of looks that way. 
I'm sorry. Right? So what happened with ACS? Well, there's an open investigation against me for my children because she said I'm negligent, which is, she knows it's a lie because I take very good care of my kids. However, yes, I do. I smoke hookah and I drink wine after work. Stop looking at her. And my son is two years old, so when I put him in the room, he knows how to open the door. When I put him down for bedtime, he'll come out like 20 times. So what I do is I put the stroller on the door so he can't get out and he goes back to sleep. I don't lock him in there, okay? Yeah, but how do you get in then? I take off the stroller and I get in. No, oh, because... It's on the oh, outside. Oh, the stroller's on the He's other two side. Years old, so he I got it. He's how to open the door. She knows that. She's just being ridiculous. So anyway, the point is that I don't want this woman around me or my children. I yeah, just no, 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 with. no, no. That, that there's no question of. You have a lawsuit against her for the November all the way to January because mm -hmm. she didn't take any of her, her things out. But what happened Monday. in January after you get arrested, uh, they take you into jail, you bond out. What do you do about getting your stuff out of the apartment? Um, I'm still in the process of looking for a room at this time. Okay, so it's not convenient for you to get the stuff right. out, so you don't. So you're suing for uh, January rent over that. You're not supposed to get rid of the stuff. So the stuff is now picked up pursuant to that other case, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so now the pain and suffering. I presume that what you are referring to specifically is the pain and suffering of having I, Child Protective Services come and investigate is, you. You know, I can't sleep thinking that they're gonna show up at my door and take my kids or something. Even though I know my children are okay, my kids have never gone through that. These people are asking my kids questions in the middle of the night. They don't well, know what I'm that sorry. is. Are they asking your kids questions in the middle of the night? They went to my house at 12.30 a.m. and my kids were in bed ready the for first the time? next day. The first time. Now, how many times have you met with social services? They have, well, obviously, they're not that concerned, they told me, because they could tell, they could tell if my kids yeah. were neglected. They're not that concerned. They know that there's lawsuits involved. So they know it's retaliatory, so you're not that worried either. You no, haven't, you haven't, it's, it's outrageous, but you haven't, you're not truly suffering that they're gonna take away your kids, because you know that they know that this is about this, right? Yeah. Now, your Zelle account is reflecting to you that the payment keeps getting canceled. But your Zelle account is reflecting to you that it got paid. One of those is wrong. And we've looked at both accounts, and both of you are telling the truth about what you say your Zelle accounts show. So we're going to have to get to the bottom of that. And, and that's going to have to happen between my court staff, you guys, and Zelle somehow after this trust. So we're going to leave. I'm going to put a pin in that. and. I believe that you are entitled to November rent, so if you have not received it, then you should be receiving it. But we'll see whether you actually received it. Do you have more than one account? No. So the payment that, according to you, keeps getting rejected is the 350 payment, correct? Yeah. Over and over and over, a 350 payment. So we're going to figure out how much you're owed for November. The most you can possibly <laughs> be owed is the 350. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're owed 700 for December. You're owed 525 for January. So that's $1,225 in rent plus the, the potential 350 of November. That is my ruling on your rent. Regarding the camera, you are entitled to an additional $38.10 because that's the cost of the camera. And then the pain and suffering and defamation of character. I find it outrageous that somebody calls Child Protective Services on you for sport because I find that that phone call was absolutely in retaliation, but in determining how much you're entitled to, I also have to take into account that from Jump Street, it was pretty clear that nothing bad was going to happen. They have not ordered you to do anything, take well, any class. Well, I have to be, um, I have to get drug tested, which I don't mind because, you know, I'm fine. Um, and they're gonna monitor my kids Where for- Where do you get drug tested? You have to I, go somewhere? I, I have to go somewhere, yeah. Where? Um, Have she, you gone or no? She, no, she said she's going to send me the details so that I can go. And then. How many times? She didn't say how many times. She said that All right, I have to I'm be ordering drug another $800 for your troubles on having the department called on you. That is a verdict of $2,063.10. Plus, we're going to figure out what's happening with the 350. That's mm -hmm. my judgment. Good luck, folks. And on your lawsuit against her, zero. Oh, excuse me. I need to deduct from that. We're going to deduct from that the security deposit that you already have on your mm -hmm. side of the 350. Okay. Well, it didn't work out too well for the plaintiff in court today, Ms. Baptiste. I'm sorry, but uh, you were suing for over $7,700, and she's got a judgment against you for over $2,000, and you don't get anything in your suit. Yeah, what fine. are you thinking? It's fine. It is what it has to be. You know you don't feel it's fine. No, it's fine because it's nothing I can do, sir. Okay. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You glad this is... 
coming to an end for I am. you? I am, because I'm tired of having this woman in my life. I just want her gone. So. It's tough to find somebody to live in your own apartment with you. you know? uh, yeah, it's what never going to happen you... again. I'm you never mean... I'm never getting anybody to live with me again. That's a, over? <laughs> a lesson learned. Okay. No. Mm -mm. Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. All right. Harvey? Okay, Doug, a quick update. The defendant actually did present proof that she sent the plaintiff a $350 security check uh, through Zelle, and that is it.